Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello everyone and welcome to our today's lesson. Inshallah, today we are going to cover the following, which is lesson four on unit six, page uh, 86. Let's go over the uh, previous lesson, which is actually the grammar part. We'll do a very quick revision and then inshallah we are going to cover our lesson. If you still remember, guys, uh, when we discussed the using of where and when an adjective closes, we said that we use where and when to describe a noun. And of course, <clears throat> we, we, we went over uh, different uh, topics and different ideas. Let's uh, see here what is actually the, the most important, the usage of where and when uh, an adjective closes. And if you remember, we, we said that a close is actually a sentence that contain uh, of a, a subject, verb, object. And of course, here we use where and when to actually describe a noun. If you, have, if you go, uh, look at this example here, last year I visited the city where Mactesimus treasure is said to be pure. As you see here, we used where to describe actually the noun which is the city. And of course, here we, we, we actually have the alternatives that we can use uh, in a state of where. Uh, as you see here, we have which and of course preceded by a preposition. For example, last year I visited the city in which Moctezuma's treasure is said to be pure. And of course, here we can use that in a state of where. Uh, which is actually plus the preposition. For example, last year I visited the city that Moctezuma's treasure is said to be pure in. And of course, here we have uh, when we discussed when and we said something that actually we use when to modify <coughs> a noun or time in an adjective close. Actually, the it's the same with where, but as you see here in this example, last Monday, was the day when I found 100 reals bill on the street. So this is actually the example. As you see here, we have other alternatives to use when as an adjective, okay? Of course, here we have that, okay, which is actually can also be a minute. As you see here in this example, last Monday was the day that found a 100 reals bill on the street. Of course, we can have an alternative, which is preposition plus which. So guys, we, we discussed here the uh, part which is actually using whose and adjective closes. So here we said something very important. We said that we have uh, or we have to differentiate between the, the usage of whose and who uh, with apostrophe and then s, which is actually who is or who has, okay? So you have to be careful when you use whose. Of course, we, we, whose is the possessive form of who, which is actually can stand for his, her, its, and their, and is always used before a noun. Whose cannot be omitted, okay? Which is actually the, the, the comparison with, uh, uh, with where. There are people whose lives are spent looking for ancient objects. As you see here, we use this uh, part or this tool as a subject of this sentence. Whose can be either the subject or the object of an adjective clause. So we can use whose as a subject or as an object of the adjective. Uh, Toton Kamen was a pharaoh, his story is the most interesting to me. And of course, in this example, we have Toton Kamen was a pharaoh whose story is the most interesting to me. The man was very happy, I found his wallet. And of course, here we can use whose as the man whose wallet I found was very happy. So here whose is the subject of this sentence. As you see here, this is the note that we have discussed at the beginning of this part. Here we'll go over some of the examples that are actually very important. <coughs> In this part, we'll combine each pair of highlighted sentences using where or when use the second sentence as the adjective close. Let us uh, do them together, and then inshallah we'll move to another exercise. As you see here, we have this part which is actually finish each sentence with an adjective close beginning with where or when. 
let's see how we can do these parts. Uh, of course, this is actually done for you, and let's go over these ones. Uh, of course, here we have our today's lesson, which is actually conversation. As you see here, this conversation actually is between Abdullah and Muhammad. We'll listen to another you guys, and then inshallah we are going to discuss each part of this conversation. Page 86. 4. Conversation. Hey, Mohammed. How was your day? Leave me alone. What's eating you? Sorry, I'm just really aggravated. I lost the watch that my parents got me for my graduation. I'm really down in the dumps. I loved that watch. And, of course, my parents are going to hit the roof when they find out. If only I'd been more careful with it. What a shame. Do you know where you left it? If I knew where I left it, then it wouldn't be lost. Okay, okay. Don't get bent out of shape. When did you realize it was gone? When I got to work this morning, I looked all over the office and here at home. It seems to have vanished into thin air. And when's the last time you remember seeing it? I was running late this morning. I remember taking the watch off my nightstand and looking at it right before I went into the bathroom to shave. Did you put it on after you looked at it? No, I didn't want to get it wet. So I put it on top of the medicine cabinet. Hold on, let me take a look. Here it is. Abdullah, you're a genius. I keep trying to tell you that. Okay, guys, we, we, we listened to this audio, which is actually related to the conversation, which is a, a very interesting one. We'll, we'll now, inshallah, go over this uh, uh, conversation and we'll discuss each part of them. As I told you, this conversation is between Abdullah and Muhammad. Uh, and of course, the conversation started by Abdullah when he said, Muhammad, how was your day? So he's asking his friend, how was your day? So here, of course, we have this uh, actually way of, of asking others, how was their days? Okay, so he told him, okay, in an angry way, leave me alone. So actually, if you, if you still, uh, or if you focus when we listen to this part, that he told him, leave me alone, in an angry way, okay? And, and then he told him, what's eating you? So here we have this word, which is actually eating. If, if someone looked at this word, uh, it's actually, uh, all the, uh, so of course, uh, he, he, he will think that this actually means eating something, okay? While this actually is meaning something else, we'll go over them, inshallah, after we discuss this part. So he told him, sorry, I'm just really aggravated okay so this is a very important word of course i lost the watch that my parents got me for my graduation so he's very angry he's upset because he lost his his actually watch that actually is a gift of uh, or from his uh, parents okay so i'm really down in the dumps i'm really down in the dumps we'll, we'll we'll look for the meaning of this expression I loved that watch, and of course, my parents are going to hit the roof when they find it out. If only I had been more careful with it. So this is actually the beginning of this conversation when Abdullah asks Muhammad, uh, what, what, what's wrong with you? And he told him that actually because the, the watch that he lost. Uh, and this part, guys, which is actually the second part of this conversation, what a shame. So as you, as you listen and as you see here, he started this part by saying what a shame. So it's actually something that it seems that he is actually uh, not okay. Do you know where you left it? Do you know where you left it? So now he's asking him about, uh, about the, 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 the place he, he left his watch. Then he told him, if I knew where I left it, then it wouldn't be lost. So here, he's, it's a little bit funny when he told him uh, w when it wouldn't be lost. Or if I knew where, it, where I left it, then it wouldn't be lost. So if, if I know wh where I, f I lost the, the watch, uh, should I ask you uh, something or should I tell you something about the watch? 
okay okay don't get pent out of shape when did you realize it was gone so now he he asking him about details to try and find the the, the watch uh, when i got to work this morning i looked all over the office and here at home it seems to have vanished into thin air so here he, he told him something very important and when as the last time you remember seeing it i was running late this morning i remember taking the watch off my nine stand and looking at it right before i went into the bathroom to shave so he, he went to the bathroom to shave for example and of course he he uh, discovered that he put the watch there L let's see what what's happened uh, else so did you put it on after you looked at it no, I didn't want to get wet, so I put it on top of the medicine cabinet. So there is a, a medicine cabinet at home and of course, or at office, and of course he put the watch there. So l let's see what happened uh, after this uh, part. Hold on, let me take a look. So let me take a look, let me look for. Uh, here it is. So here it is. Abdullah, you are a genius. So he, he told Abdullah that he is a genius, uh, which actually means that you are clever, that you are smart, that you are leading me to the way I can find the watch. I keep trying to tell you that, okay? So I keep trying to tell you that. So he found his watch at the, uh, or at, near to the cabinet of, of medications uh, after Abdullah told him something that actually led him to find his watch. So this is actually the conversation we listened to. And of course, we discussed some of the details. This is actually some questions related to the conversation, which is very important. Uh, the first question is, why is Muhammad aggravated? And when did Muhammad realize that his watch was missing? Where did Muhammad leave his watch? And how did he realize this? Well, inshallah, go over these questions and do them together. So this is actually the first question. Of course, the answer is he lost his watch. So that's why Muhammad is aggravated, which is actually angry, not a K, because he lost his watch. So this is actually the, the reason that's Muhammad aggravated, which is actually lo losing his watch. This is actually the second question, which is very important. When did Muhammad realize that his watch was missing? So what the time he, he, he discovered that his watch is lost? Let's see together. He realized it was missing when he got to work. So he, he realized and he discovered that he missed his watch the time he uh, went to work. So this is actually a very important part in the conversation. Where did Muhammad leave his watch? How did he realize this? Let's see guys together. He left his watch on top of the medicine cabinet, okay, in the bathroom. Abdullah helped him remember this. So we told you that Abdullah helped Muhammad a lot in solving this problem, which is actually finding his watch. After he told him what the, 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 the last place you, you, you went to, and of course he told him that he uh, left his watch in, 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 in the, uh, or near to or close to the medicine cabinet in the bathroom. So when, when he trying to find the watch, of course he, he found it uh, close to the uh, medical or the medications cabinet. Of course, this is very important part in the conversation, which is actually the real talk. We'll go over some of the expressions that we got in the conversation. If you, uh, uh, go, if we, if you for example, uh, look at this part, I, I told you that w whenever you look at this word, you, you imagine that it's a verb which is actually ends with I and G, which is actually not true. Uh, of course, here we mean that is actually bothering. If we went to the conversation, we can link this with actually a conversation. As you see here, which is actually what's eating you. So he's asking him what's eating you. What's bothering you? What, what makes you angry? What makes you not okay? What makes you sad? So this is actually very important to, to think about. 
down in the dumps, down in the, in the dumps. So this is actually another expression which is very important, which means feeling sad and disappointed. When you listen to this expression, you actually find that it actually mean or it means that actually feeling sad and disappointed. Here we have hit the roof. If you still remember when we discussed the conversation, he was uh, he was afraid of, of his parents when when they discovered that the, the, the watch is lost, of course they will hit the roof. So the, the, the meaning of this expression, which is actually be very angry, they will be very angry because he lost his watch, because they, they gifted him, uh, of course, in, in his graduation. So bent out of shape, bent out of shape, which is actually upset, aggravated, okay? So this is actually the meaning of this expression. Vanished into thin air, or vanished into thin air, which is actually disappeared without a trace, disappeared without a trace, which is actually, uh, th they couldn't okay, find that actually uh, thing. So this is very important. And in this part, guys, we'll discuss some of the uh, ideas or topics that actually we are going to do in the uh, next lessons. Uh, the first part, which is uh, expressing regret. Of course, we use some of the verb, okay, to, to express uh, regret, to express certainty, to express possibility, and so on. And here, of course, we have this part, which is actually very important. I regret, and of course, you can use it in the negative or positive way. I regret plus the verb and ing, and of course, I will or would never do that again. I wish I hadn't. I'm really annoyed that I'm sorry I ever, if only I, looking back, I would have. So you can use all these parts or all these ways to, to show or to express your regret, okay? If we can put them in sentences, okay? I regret, for example, not visiting my uh, parents. So here you are, you are expressing the regret because you, you didn't visit your parents. I regret, for example, uh, one of the verb in ing, I regret, for example, uh, uh, let's say, uh, studying okay, with my friends. Okay? I will or would, for example, never uh, do that again. Okay, so this is actually uh, a, a way of uh, expressing regret. Uh, sometimes you, you uh, for example, if you have a child, he, he told you, I will never do that again. For example, imagine that one of your children, for example, broken the the the, uh, the window and of course he told he told him why you did that okay so he told you and of course he he will express regret by saying i will never do that again i wish i hadn't okay and this is actually another way of expressing regret i'm really annoyed that i'm sorry i ever if only I blah, blah, blah. So this is actually a way of expressing regret. Here, of course, we have the way how we express understanding, okay? Whenever you understand something, you can actually express in this way, as you see here, how awful, upsetting that must have been. I know how that feels. I'm sorry that happened. That's too bad. What a shame. So this is actually the way of expressing regret and of course express, expressing understanding. That's all for today, guys. Thank you very much. See you soon.